Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and disaster management on our channel, the Geo Ecologist. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing our channel and also please go to the playlist section for the earlier videos. And also if you are interested in taking paid online classes, the details are there on the screen and also in the description of our website that is thegeoecologist.com where all the paid courses are available. You can go and explore yourself. Now in this session on hydrology we are going to learn about the evolution of hydrology as a discipline as a science in terms of the ancient to medieval to modern so this video is going to be a journey of how hydrological sciences evolved from the ancient and what is the condition in the present so it's going to be a video which is going to be very interesting full of facts full of images and maps so do watch the video till the end and do share with others as well. So now let's learn. So now let's learn about the evolution of hydrology as a discipline. So when I say hydrology as a discipline, understanding needs to be made through the evolutionary process of this particular subject. How? So if you observe, the first thing is that hydrology has been a subject of investigation and engineering for times immemorial. We say from our civilizations, from different millennia if you observe. So the question is that is it easy? No, it's not that easy to answer to this question how and where the science of hydrology actually began but still we try to get some perspectives over it so authorities on hydrology the academics in hydrology have talked about certain things which we need to look into that is transition from the stone age to copper age if you go historically so if you observe from the old stone age from the lithic periods that we say so from neolithic to chalcolithic and then furthermore towards the civilizations we observe the bronze age civilizations where it largely develops so if you observe water systems existed both in countries about 4000 years that is before the christian era so roughly 4000 bc 4500 bc till present how it has evolved so if you look into anthropological evidences and also many times archaeological evidences we find that Indus Valley civilization around 3000 BC had the greater hydrological systems than that of the Egyptian civilization or any other civilization of the same age that is Mesopotamia or Chinese so there are several indicators to it so parts of China reached an advanced stage in irrigation long before Christ so what we need to look into is this hydrological system and its understanding which gradually made progress with time the evolution of hydrological cycle and its understanding from precipitation to evaporation to percolation to infiltration and runoff this entire cyclic form is coming in the modern era so how did it emerge so to understand the chronology of these various phases of development of the science of hydrology we need to broadly visualize it and look into it through world perspective first so what we are doing in this lecture is world perspective and in the lecture to come we'll be talking about Indian perspective so if you look into world's perspective there are certain points to be understood so first is the speculation of concept and this was done till almost renaissance in Europe that is till 14th century then after renaissance what you observe the observations being made in the Europe and several other areas in the world in 15th and 16th century then what you observe is the time of measurements so hydrological measurements started to be done in 17th century then what you observe is experimentation that is in 18th century and in 19th century the modernization of hydrological concepts and science started and then we have the quantification of empirical formulae 1900 to 1930s and what you observe is rationalization of hydrological theory by 1950s and since 1950s and till present what we observe is mathematical analysis theorizations and utility of the new technology satellite technology computer technology and finally the present state of hydrological science that we observe so what you see there are certain people whose contribution is important so here is jackie 1987 he traced the history of hydrology to ancient china and he gave three stages of development there as well so what do you observe this is a common stage 
but this is a Chinese way of looking into it. So geographical hydrology, engineering hydrology and social development is the sequence that you observe in terms of Chinese development of hydrology. Now let's look into certain civilizations which are called hydraulic civilizations. Have you heard the word? So remember to quote hydraulic civilizations. These civilizations on your screen which you observe Indus, Ganga, Harappa, this particular civilization, here Tigris and Euphrates, here Nile Valley, here you have Yellow River. What do you observe? Hydraulic that is water based civilization, river valley based civilization. So this word was coined by German American historian Karl Wittfogel. So Karl Wittfogel talks about all these hydraulic civilizations and their contributions to the advancement in terms of hydrological understanding, hydrological sciences, which are supposed to be the inceptions of our subject called hydrology, isn't it? So Wittfogel advanced the term in his book, Oriental Despotism in 1957. So hydraulic civilization is the word coming from this particular book, 1957 it's published. Now let's look further. The first water structures that were observed in these civilizations had what had supply systems dams dikes riverbed improvements irrigation and drainage channels so that's what we observe from these hydraulic civilization so one by one let's understand a little more about these civilizations so let's look into Egyptian civilization I'm sure you have seen this kind of images before so the masonry dam that we observe was built across the river Nile about 14 miles upstream from present-day Cairo around 4000 BC which is there as an evidence right so apart from the papyrus ink heliographics then you have cosmetics wigs what you observe is shadow of irrigation here which is of importance so shadow of irrigation if you observe that is hand operated device for lifting water into irrigation channels right that's the invention that happened here and you observe certain things in terms of measurement so what is the contribution of egyptian civilization in hydrology nilometer what is it it's basically measuring the records of water levels. Nile back then around 3000 to 3500 BC. Now this pillar that you observe, so it has different levels. You observe here different levels. So during flooding, you have different level. During lean season, you have different level. This is something called Nilometer. This was there and it's there as an evidence. Now let's look into a particular reference. So it's basically a Sith K. Biswas, 1969, he published this particular paper, A Short History of Hydrology, The Progress of Hydrology Proceedings at First International Seminar for Hydrology Professors, and you observe this is University of Illinois, USA. And from this particular paper, you observe the development here. You can pause the video and you can look into from 3200 BC till 600 AD. What is the sequence what you observe here? And there are certain things that you may pick from it. Now let's understand the explanation of this particular development cycle through the evolutionary phases that is in the ancient during Greeks and Romans then in the Middle Ages and then in the modern ages now. So if you observe the Aegean Sea at Anatolia Ionia after 600 BC this is the Greco-Roman civilization that you are talking about. So Aegean Sea here this green patch that you observe this particular coast which is part of Asia Minor right now if you observe. So here the Ionians built the first kind of hydraulic structures. And it was documented by Thales who lived in the town called Miletus. So Thales is the first philosopher who proclaimed water is the original substance of all things on the earth. Means water is the primal substance. Who said? Thales said. And that's what is giving us the idea that water was really important. So Thales was basically a mathematician, astronomer and statesman and remember he was regarded by Aristotle as the first ever philosopher 600 BC. So 6th century BC or 7th century BC is of prime importance across sciences that you'll observe later. Now the period of Plato and Aristotle, the very important philosophers in Greco-Roman civilization. So Plato is well-known philosopher who lectured in academia in Athens, that is about say 4th century BC. And he gave explanation of hydrological cycle saying rivers and springs originate from rainfall. Now look at these basics that are being built in terms of hydrological understanding. Come to Aristotle who was disciple of the same Plato and he writes an article on hydrology entitled Metrology. Logica. So remember, Metrologica is the first article on hydrology during Greeks. 
and he explained the mechanics of precipitation and gave his thoughts on winds and seas. That's very important. Now look into the period of Roman Empire, the vast Roman Empire. Remember here aqueducts were created, constructed. Look into these aqueducts here, right? So you observe these aqueducts here on your screen. They supply millions of fresh water in terms of the city of Rome and its entire western empire. So water supply structures at Istanbul are still present. You'll observe them. And also this is Greco-Roman. Look into the other part of the world, the Sinhalese, the modern day Sri Lanka that you say. Remember, they also have these kind of water structures. If you observe here, the inner city and then you have the waterways around it and you have several water tanks around it. So this is what you observe, the valve pit, large reservoir and something called any cuts, the masonry check dams that are found and canal irrigation which is found in Sri Lanka, right? Then what you observe is the book that is very important or the list of books that we have is in the first century before common era, Marcus Vitruvius. Now Marcus Vitruvius is also a reference in architectural studies because he wrote the volume that is a treatise on architecture. But remember these architectural designs will obviously have the construction activities related to hydrology. So if you observe he talks about 10 books on architecture in which he mentions a lot of these aqueducts and their designs and several other things that we talk about. Now let's look into Hero, this person, the name itself is Hero. So Hero of Alexandria. And what is his contribution? Hero stated that discharge measurement depends both on velocity and cross-sectional area of stream. It was not just the cross-sectional area that could give you the discharge, but also the velocity had to be looked into. So these are the building blocks, the little, little things that added to the greater hydrological science knowledge. Now comes the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. So if you remember dark ages what you have heard in history in Europe specifically where the rise of Christian church led to the scholastic era where almost for 13 centuries not much of development in science and technology happened and whatever development of ancient was there was fading away. It faded away and signs of hydrology as well did not progress. So then comes the time where you have these saviors of these knowledge. So what was being saved in India, in China and also in Middle East with the rise of Islam. So so you observe rain gauges at the same time were developed in China, snow gauges were made of bamboo in China during same time and comes Renaissance and during Renaissance the famous person that you know is Leonardo da Vinci who is an artist and also had a great interest in hydrology and hydraulics. So if you observe his work is very important. He tried to measure velocity and also look into the streams nearby and the principle of flotation, right? So he had better understanding of these principles of these channels and also looked into further the floating of corks and continuity equation that we observe in later lectures. Now, Italian architect Giovanni Fontana is also understood in terms of the pioneer of flooding of Tiber at Rome in 1598. He had a work on floods, so he knows how a river floods and the mechanism of the floods, right? Come 17th century, so during 17th century, you have greater scholars like Pierre Perrault, then you have Admi Marriott, then you have Adam Helly, and I'm sure Helly's comet, you must have heard Helly at least. So if you observe, their contribution to hydrology is fundamental, especially during the modern phase that you observe. So Pierre Perrault published a book on hydrology on the origins of fountains in 1674. Then Marriott also published in terms of flow of rivers and most importantly heli proved by calculations enough water evaporates from ocean and rivers to produce a rainfall. So evaporation and condensation relationship is what heli talked about. But also remember this person Benedetto Castelli. Now this particular reference is very important. A book titled on the measuring of running water in 1628 and Castelli's work was very important in order of understanding the universal discharge equation. In the lectures to come when we talk about water discharge, its calculation, Castelli's reference is also going to be important. Now look into the other scholars, Christopher Wren, Robert Hooke. They also are credited to make this kind of rain gauge which is called tipping bucket rain gauge and this is the contribution in 17th century that you observe. Comes 18th century 
further more scholarship crew hydrological sciences advanced and you have chesey then you have dalton then you have manning these scholars looked into experimental phase of hydrology so various hydraulic principles were discovered and look at these people bernoulli's piezometer the borda tube the pitot tube the bernoulli's theorem chesey's formula these are the contribution in 18th century and 19th century obviously laid the firm base of modern science where hydrology was related to groundwater hydrology and surface water measurement both so you see the branching here right so hydrogeology or geohydrology that we talk and there are certain scholars look into the names here darcy's law of groundwater flow dupit's well formula then you have certain capillary flow equation discharge formula and several others that we observe are the creations in 19th century and then what you observe this person darcy this darcy is very important so you must point out development of groundwater hydrology he is supposed to be the father of development of modern groundwater hydrology so darcy's law is very important and alongside other scholars it's a notable development in 19th century now comes the empirical era where from 1900 to 1930 hundreds of empirical equations were proposed in vt chow's work of 1964 it says that there were several engineering judgment parameters being set and all those things were done and rational era from 1930 to 1950 brought the development in terms of hydrograph theory and most important scholar here is horton remember horton's name will come again and again in 1933 he gave us the infiltration equation then you have these developed new equations in hydraulic wells in 1935 gumbel's work is also as important in terms of frequency analysis right and you see theoretical era from 1950 till date so what do you observe rise of quantification rise of technology rise of computers satellite so sophisticated instruments computers and that's what we are right now looking into and look into the work of water resources development center wrdc established under un 1959 then we have other bodies so united nations educational scientific cultural organization unesco doing a lot of work in hydrology world meteorological organization food and agricultural organization and world health organization these organizations run a lot of programs on hydrology and related sciences across the world today and international hydrologic decade ihd was declared in which decade 1961 right so 1960s were the times of hydrological development to a greatest level so some contributions of scholars in hydrology is listed here lamarck wrote hydrogeology in 1802 robert horton father of modern hydrology infiltration theory 1933 you have dk todd groundwater hydrology 1959 vt shaw handbook of applied hydrology 64 then you have shorley's work of introduction to geographical hydrology and for geography students Students, this is a must-read reference. What you observe: introduction to geographical hydrology, R.C. Ward principles of hydrology, and then you have the Warshney's work that is engineering hydrology, Raghunathan's work of hydrology, and then you have geohydrology by Wiest in 1965. So these are certain references. These are certain scholars whose contribution matter a lot. And furthermore, apart from this evolutionary process of world perspective, we will be looking into the Indian perspective of hydrology in the next lecture. So don't go anywhere and watch the videos evolution of hydrology and water resources management in ancient India. We are going to bring it to you, which is going to be a very interesting and unique lecture like this one. So do like, subscribe, and share these videos for. maximum outreach so now i hope that you have understood the evolution of hydrology as a discipline and in the lessons to come we'll be talking more on indian perspective of hydrology and its evolution that is through the ages how hydrological understanding evolved in india so stay tuned stay safe keep watching and learning and don't forget to subscribe and also please share these videos with others as well